So here at, at uh, NAB 2013, we're introducing Avid Media Composer 7, uh, which is really targeted at two very specific things, and that's helping people with the file-based workflow revolution, including high-res, as well as distributed editing. We're seeing a lot more and more production going uh, outside of the facility, people needing to edit in the field in real time, collaborating uh, in sync with the facility, um, just to make the project much more efficient. So for the file-based end, um, a while back we introduced something called AMA, Avid Media Access, which allows you to link directly to file-based media and work with it inside Media Composer. Um, people really like that, but they, they were missing the traditional media management tools that Avid has always been famous for. So now in Media Composer 7, AMA Media is treated just like native Avid Media. So the full complement of media management tools inside Media Composer is available whether or not you capture from tape or import, or you link directly to file-based sources like RED and ARI and, and, and Canon Media. Um, specifically for high res we're seeing more and more people ask for support for high res workflows for 4K, for 5K, 2K. Um, but they're all telling us that they need to deliver an HD master today. They just want to future-proof their content so they're not having to up-res later on when people are actually viewing 4K at home. So for that, we've introduced two new features. The first called FrameFlex, which is basically a high res to HD pan and scan tool to allow the editor to have full creative control over how the image is reframed from high res to HD. Uh, in association with that is new support for 1D, 3D LUTs, as well as color decision lists. So let's say I'm working with Airy Media, it's shot as, as log C, uh, I want to be able to apply the Airy LUT inside my editor so that it looks proper in the Rec. 709 space. Of course, it's, it's not baked into the file, it is a metadata file, so we can add and remove it um, as need be. So for just basic editorial, you want to have this Rec. 709 LUT on there to, for viewing, you can do that. Then when it's time for color correction, you can remove the LUT and begin doing color correction. Uh, more on the media management front, a uh, new feature called Dynamic Media Folders. These are user customizable folders that you can set up uh, outside of Media Composer to do media management uh, operations for you. For example, I can set up profiles that say, when I get media in from the field, when it mounts on my desktop, I want you to make a local copy of it for me. I want you to transcode that into a more uh, editing friendly Avid DNX HD codec, and I want you to automatically link that to my project. So, three steps right there that used to tie up the editor from doing creative storytelling are now all done in the background and automated. We're doing a lot of great things with audio. We've added Pro Tools Master Audio Fader into Media Composer. So now we have a single bus that you can use to level your entire audio mix to add RTAS plugins to it, to do tonal adjustments, to create, uh, to do compression, things like that, which as we know is becoming more and more important with all the regulations happening around loudness levels uh, inside your programming. Um, things like audio waveforms, which you know, editors used to turn on and go, oh, I gotta wait for the audio waveform to paint. We've now borrowed that from Pro Tools, and we cache those audio waveforms. So they, they draw much faster, they stay on the screen as you resize and shuttle the timeline, and they stay with the project. So once they're done, you go open the project again, they're already there waiting for you. So it's not something you have to do over and over again. And of course, for the, the distributed editing that I talked about earlier, Interplay Sphere for both Mac and PC-based users, uh, allowing me to use my media composer to connect to any Interplay facility in the world in real time and collaborate, you know, share media, share assets, um, even do editing via web browser through our Interplay Central client. So now editing is, isn't so much just about the editor anymore, it's about workflow and being able to in, empower people other than just the editor to take part in the storytelling process. And of course you wrap all that up in one of our biggest announcements about Media Composer and that is now available for a US price point of uh, $999. Uh, it's an incredible value, incredible package of new features um, that we're showing here at NAB.